Hey. Hello. Okay. Hey. Thanks for staying for. Uh, hello. Thanks for staying with me for uh, the mechanism video. So in this one here, I'm going to show you guys how we go from a ketone with excess alcohol and. Uh, to save time, I'm going to just do the acid catalyzed method. If you want to see the base catalyzed method, just post a comment down below. If I have time, I'll make it for you. But uh, yeah, we're going to do it with the acid catalyzed method, and you guys are going to see how we go from here to a hemiacetal, and then from a hemiacetal to acetal. Okay? Alright, so uh, I want you guys to do this mechanism along with me, and you want, you want to try and be one step ahead of me every time. Okay? So right now, uh, you have to ask yourself, like, what's going to be the first step, right? And because this reaction is acid catalyzed, we probably have to do something with the acid first. And that's exactly what we do. So you need to ask yourself, what in your beaker is going to be protonated or get a hydrogen or a proton from this acid? Because that's what acid does. It throws protons away. So you have two options here. The alcohol oxygen over here, or the ox oxygen of your carbonyl. And the answer is that you're going to actually use this oxygen here, who has lone pairs, that can pick up that hydrogen. You could do this, but then you would get like a positive charge on your oxygen, because now it would, then it would have three bonds, and it's not really the right way to go. So what you do is this first. And by the way, almost all nucleophilic substitutions with carbonyls involve this first step here. Because after you do this first step and pick up the acid on your carbonyl, you sort of destabilize your carbonyl. Because then, now what you should get is this, right? And by the way, am I done here? See if you can find any errors. So hit pause on the video. And um, what I'm missing is a positive charge right here. Because oxygen before, right, he had two bonds. And oxygen is always neutral when it's two bonds. But he gave up one of his electrons to the proton here. And when you give away an electron, you become more positive. And he had to give away that electron to form that bond between them. So now you're here, right? And then what you have to realize now is that your carbonyl groups, they can resonate. And what I mean by that is like the double bond here can shift up to fix that um, positive, positive charge on the oxygen. But the problem is if you resonate up, then what's going to happen is you're going to get this, um, well, this resonance form where you have a carbocation a positive charge on a carbon atom. And that's not too good because if you have that in your beaker, it might blow up in your face. And you don't want that. And your molecule doesn't want that either. So before this step even happens, you, ha you use your, um, your alcohol or your oxygen nucleophile. It realizes that this molecule is unstable right now because of this first step. And then it takes the opportunity to attack this carbon right here that has like a secret positive charge, if you know what I mean. And yeah, by the way, if at any point in this video you're confused, just post a comment down below and I'll see if I can clear things up for you guys. But yeah, so your alcohol takes this opportunity to attack the, the carbon, so this is like or. It's resonance form, so like this molecule is secretly this molecule, this molecule form is secretly this molecule form. But when it attacks this carbon, this carbon only wants four bonds, but now he's getting a fifth bond from this uh, alcohol group here, so which bond does he throw away, right? And it perfectly throws away or pushes one of the, the, the double bonds up to fix the positive charge on the um, oxygen. So now, what you're going to get is this product. Let's see. Do, 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 do. A nice neutral alcohol group, right? And then, because this alcohol is attacking, he's going to be attached down here. And then, Make sure you don't lose any carbons, by the way. So, one carbon, two carbon, three carbon. One carbon, two carbon, three, uh, three carbons. Alright, so now, okay, is there anything wrong with my figure right now? Take a second, pause the video, see if you can find it. So what's wrong is, I'm missing a positive charge over here. Alcohol was nice and neutral before, with two bonds. One bond with this carbon, one bond with this hydrogen. But he gave up one of his electrons to the carbon over here to form that bond of friendship, basically, between molecules. No, that was corny, but yeah. Um, so now, because he gave away an electron, he's positive now, okay? That makes sense. So now, before you go any further, you want to first fix this um, positive charge right here. And 
you think back to my original video where I went over all these reactions, you remember my definition of a catalyst? Or like, yeah, a catalyst, in our case it's acid. In your reaction, you never want to create more acid or lose acid in your reaction. So what happened in this first step here is that we lost acid and, also, and we got a Cl- minus, right? as a result from that. So now, the Cl- minus is the perfect uh, molecule to fix our problem right here. The catalyst sort of comes back and helps you out again because he has lone pairs here that can come, out, come around and grab the hydrogen to give the electrons back to the oxygen. Okay, so then now, what you're going to get is this. Um, this, yep, everything's the same, except your oxygen is nice and neutral, right? Okay, so now you have to ask yourself, okay, what's the next step, right? And by the way, uh, you formed another HCl here after this step. Alright, what's the next step, right? And you already did the product prediction, so you know what the product is. And in case you didn't, do the product prediction, you're kind of stuck. Well, for these kind of reactions, you're always going to end up creating acetals, um, meaning you're going to add on your, your oxygen nucleophile onto your molecule, and then... Actually, wait, sorry. Uh, sorry, I completely blanked out. Here is your, here is your hemiacetal. We got, to our, we got to our first product already. But then now, you have to remember that hemiacetals are unstable, and we have an excess of alcohol. Uh, alcohol. And we want to drive our reaction all the way through to the end, which is the acetal form. So what you do is, um, think back what you did in the first step, so you didn't get to your hemiacetal. You made your, your carbonyl unstable by pronating with, with the acid. So you do it, you, you don't have a carbonyl anymore, but now you have an alcohol. And your goal is to eventually kick out your alcohol, uh, your, this oxygen, right? Because it gets kicked off in the form of water. So if you want to kick it off, how you kick it off, you turn it into a better leading group. How do you turn into a leaving group? You give it a positive charge by forcing your alcohol to attack the acid. And then when you attack the acid, what you're going to get is... This molecule over here with a positive charge now, right? Because carbon had two bonds before, now he has three bonds. So he's positive, and also he lost electrons when he made the bond. This. I'm just going to move our your um, ether up here just to just to like make it easier to see our product. All right. All right. So now, what do we do? Right. We want to kick it off, but how do we kick it off? You could do this, right? You could do this and just like make it leave. But if you do do that, then you're going to get um, what you call it? You're going to get a uh, carbocation, right? But if you remember back to carbocation, they're really really bad. They, uh, they destabilize your molecule. They, they're like really unstable molecules. They're very reactive. So you don't want to form a carbocation. So instead, um, your molecule kind of says, uh, kind of wants, okay, so, okay, sorry, I lost my train of thought. But uh, yeah, the reason why you have excess uh, alcohol is because now it plays a second role. It comes in and attacks in to get to your product. So you're, another uh, propanol molecule is going to just attack this carbon right here. And then when he attacks this carbon right here, this carbon has four bonds already. So he's like, okay, I don't need this many bonds, right? So which one do I give away? And he looks around him, and what's around him is this positively charged hydrogen molecule. It's like a bomb. So he's like, okay, get your unstable butt or ass out of my molecule right now. I don't need you. And that's exactly what happens. So this is much better because when you do this, you don't create a carbocation like before. Instead, you're going to create you're going to get this molecule over here, right? Which is really, really close to our acetal by, um, final product. But, by the way, anything wrong here? You guys can probably already guess what's wrong. And it's the positive charge. Oxygen had two bonds. Now he has three bonds. He lost electrons to form the bond. Yada, yada. I'm pretty sure you guys are tired of me saying that over and over again. But yeah, so how do we fix this? You have to... Think back to the whole catalyst problem. Keep track of your catalyst, right? Uh, your catalyst got used up over here, and then you got your catalyst back over here, and then your catalyst got used up again in this step here. So then now you, in this step here, when it got used up, you formed Cl minus. So I'm just going to bring our Cl minus over here. 
Okay? And the Cl minus can help us out perfectly because he has electrons that can grab the H, resonate the electrons, well not resonate, but give the electrons to the oxygen. And then, here we go. We're at our final product of acetal. Uh, this water molecule that got kicked off is the water molecule that's over here. And, uh, whew, alright. Lost my train of thought. Give me a second to catch up. But, um, yeah. And then, you, after this step here, you're going to create your HCl catalyst again. And because you didn't create any more of your catalysts uh, than you already had, you know that you did the right mechanism. So, I know this is kind of crazy, so take a second. If you got confused or anything, just jump back. Take another look at everything. But um, another trick you can use is um, every time your catalyst gets used up, put a sad face. And then when you get your catalyst back, put a happy face. Sad face. Um, happy face. Your sad, your sad faces and your happy faces, the number of sad faces and happy faces should cancel out with each other. So this way, you get a net of zero. Meaning you don't make more of your catalyst. You don't lose any of your catalyst. And um, let's see what else. And also, do you, you kind of see how like every time I got stuck in this mechanism, what kind of helped me along was like the catalyst. Like when I got stuck here because this molecule wouldn't really react, I made it unstable here. I changed the carbonyl to make it more unstable by reacting with the acid. And then in this step right here, when my um, oxygen has a positive charge, and I didn't know where to go from there, my uh, catalyst came back. It helped me fix the problem to get a neutral molecule. And then when I was stuck again, couldn't go forward, I used my acid to destabilize my, my molecule again to help me out again. And then, I know I'm saying again like 10,000 times, but I just really, really want to stress, don't forget your catalyst. It's like the best thing in the world. But yeah, this is basically it for the mechanism for going from uh, what was trying to oxygen nucleophiles and carbonyls to hemiacetal and acetals. Okay? Alright, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, feel free to post them. If you like the way I explain mechanisms, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you get updated when I make new videos. Uh, yeah, that's it. See ya. Hope this is hope this helped clear up acid towels better.